some general science questions. Lay them on me. This one's from Andrew. For the past few months, I've noticed a funny phenomenon. Whenever my phone vibrates in my pants pocket, I feel the vibration on the opposite side leg pocket to the side that the phone is on. Am I crazy? No, uh, almost certainly referred sensation. So what's happening is that on one, uh, from each leg, we'll say it's on the outside of the leg, around the pant area, the pant pocket area, they both go back to the same area in the spine. From the left leg and the right leg, they go to the same area in the spine and they talk to each other. They're doing a bit of cross-talking and they shouldn't really do that, but they do. And it talks to the other side. Look at it this way. You're over 25 and you're not dead. You're lucky. Enjoy it. Ian writes, I heard recently that benzene levels in a closed car can reach 40 times accepted levels and as a carcinogen, this is a real health issue when getting into a hot car. Is it best to let hot air out of the open doors before getting in the car to drive off? And can benzene cause cancer? Yes, many things cause cancer. Uh, and the obvious thing to do is you get in the car, you wind out all windows, you drive forward. You let the outside air blow out the inside air and then you wind the windows up and cut in the aircon and all that sort of stuff. Easy, no worries. I wouldn't worry too much about the risk of it unless you specialised in breathing in benzene fumes in Australia. You can go to a petrol bowser and get the petrol bowser and stick the nozzle into the tank and breathe in massive amounts of benzene. In California, you can't. In Australia, they have managed to not let that law come in. Brian wants to know, for cleaning the kitchen, I'm an avid user of white vinegar in water. Yep. It, it works like a charm. Yep. It actually does the same for the car paint work, but polishes up in a flash. My question is, will using it harm the car paint work? Don't know. Um, car paint formulations are so much better than they were five years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. They're pretty damn tough. And it might be that they've gone to a new paint that might, while it's tough against everything else, is uniquely sensitive to this. The easy answer there would be to ring up the local car company in this state and uh, say, tell me about your, cause talk to a chemist involved in the paints. And I reckon you'd be safe, but it might be uniquely sensitive. Don't know, outside my range of knowledge. That's, that's how I do it. This one's from Tom. Someone once told me that before boiling an egg, put a pinhole into the air sac at the blunt end of the egg to prevent the egg from cracking. Is that correct? Yes and no. Uh, no, in the sense that according to uh, the French molecular gastronomists, um, you cook an egg by heating it at 65 degrees centigrade, which ain't boiling. Yes, in the sense that if you get an egg and you just plunge it into boiling water, you can, if there's a lot of air in the egg, have sudden expansion that can expand so rapidly that the air cannot penetrate through the holes in the eggshell. The eggshell has about 17,000 holes in it through which you can breathe. You would know this if you had read my 20th book, which is quite different from my... 31st book, which is better and shiny, but it has 17,000 holes in it. And if you give it enough time, the air can go out. If you don't give it enough time, it'll just go <laughs> and explode everywhere. I've, I've actually got a question of my own, Carl. It's one I've had for, for years and years. I've always wanted to ask you. When we look at a pane of glass, it's generally transparent, clear, we can see right through it. But when you look down the side of a pane of glass or through the side... It's green. It's green. Why is Iron. It, why is it green? Iron. I-R-O-N. It, it is possible, okay, so you look along the edge of a sheet of glass. Or so through the side. Through the, sorry, through yeah. the side. You look along yeah. the length of it, and so instead of looking through a few millimetres, you're suddenly looking along a metre or two, and you can see the green colour. Now, it is possible to remove the iron, but it's expensive. And so if it's critical that they have a true colour balance, rather than remove the iron, they add another chemical which gives you a minus green colour and that makes it more, chem more clear. So it adds a little bit of cost to make it more transparent, more or less green, but it's a lot cheaper than removing the iron. Now, we've had glass for a long time. Did that answer your question, by yeah, the way? Yeah, yeah. Is, okay. the, is the iron in the, in the sand that, that, that forms the glass? Yes, you're stuck with that. Um, right. If you get sand 
and just heat it up to 1,700 degrees C, which is incredibly difficult. Because out of a campfire, you only get 800. If you get up to 1,700 degrees C, you will make a glass, which is thick and viscous with air bubbles and not very transparent. If you throw some oxygen atoms in there, sodium carbonate, natrium, from uh, the Natra Lake in Egypt, dry lake, then you can then melt it at a lower temperature and that will be called water glass because the glass will actually dissolve in water. So you add other chemicals and to make it transparent. And glass is not a liquid. Well, it's not a liquid. It's, it's not a slow moving you liquid. You believe the glass was a liquid, I did. You? I, yeah, I did. I thought that the old window panes in old churches and old mansions, they're slowly dripping towards the... Ah, that's what most people think. But gravity. if you actually go looking at the churches, you will find that, yes, five-sixths on average, looking at a couple of dozen churches around Europe and America, five-sixths of the little pieces of glass are thicker at the bottom than they are at the top. But one-sixth are the other way around. What, is there reverse gravity for those one-sixth? No, the, it all depends on how you make glass. Nowadays, we make plate glass uh, as a result of uh, Pilkington, Mr Pilkington doing the washing up in his kitchen and dropping a little drop of detergent onto the hot water and seeing that it just went shoop, flat Film. in all directions. So now he we played with this and what we do now is we get molten glass and we lay it on molten tin. It comes out dead flat. So you can have huge sheets of plate glass. But in the old days, you'd have the big blob of molten glass and then you'd have a stick and you'd pick up a glass, so you had this big vat, you'd pick up a blob about that big, and then you'd spin it. It'd be on a stick, so you'd, you'd stick a stick in there and you'd pick up this blob, and then you'd spin that thing. And then, and I quote, with the set, this is from my 19th book, which is different from my 31st book, but from my 19th book, and you spin the glass, you spin this rod, and then suddenly, and I quote, with the sound of a wet umbrella suddenly opening, it goes, Poof! and this blob turns into a flat sheet about this big. And it's spinning and you have to keep it going and it cools down. And then you have to pick it up, it's still hot. Then with gloves you have to pick it up and then hold it down gently. Now it's not dead flat, not like plate glass. So you cut areas out of it. You know, if you can get an area that big that's pretty damn flat, that's good. And you have to get a lot of sheets of glass. And so with the church windows you get little tiny squares. And whenever you're building anything, you always put the big bits at the bottom and little bits on top. Supporting. Yeah, supporting. Mm. You, know, you just mm. tend to have the, the bigger bits as low down as possible. And so glass is not a liquid. I'm sorry, they oh. lied to you, Dr. <laughs> oh, Tony. I'm oh. sorry. Thanks to all our members for sending in the questions to Dr. Carl. Unfortunately, we couldn't get through them all. We did our best and we'll hopefully have him back on the show in the near future. If you've got a, a topic of interest uh, and you want to talk about it, well, feel free to join in on the discussion section on the site.